on the streets of Washington, D.C., trying to pretend like life is normal after life on the streets yesterday was anything but. Good morning with Keyshawn Johnson and Jay Williams. I'm Zubin Mahenti. Fellas, I just want to get your raw, cathartic, honest, visceral reaction to what you saw yesterday, not just as a black man, but as a human being. And then we will get into the thoughts of those people that we covered so much in the sports world that have frankly lived this from the moment they've walked the earth. I, you know, it was just wild, right? I mean, it was, it, was, it, it was one of those deals, man, where you just sit there and you look at it and you can't help. And I, and I know you said not just from a, a black man's perspective, but just overall, but it's hard for me to separate the two. Um, to be able to sit there during a time when I was trying to concentrate working at NFL Live, sitting there watching, seeing those visuals on television of individuals acting, it just, it was crazy, man. It was, it was one of those, it was a thing that I sat back and I said to myself and I kept just basically talking to myself and said, am I really watching this, seeing what's going on, how people have basically taken over the U.S. Capitol on Capitol Hill with congressmen and senators and government officials inside in destroying this place for what? And then on top of that, I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, what if these were minority protesters. I didn't even think about it being black protesters. I thought about minorities or people that support minorities and was wanting to protest. Because that wasn't a protest. That was somewhat a deliberate act of domestic terrorism, as far as I'm concerned. That's what that was. It, it, it wasn't a protest. They were not out there peacefully protesting to send a message, to have a conversation. They was out there to destroy property and to put fear in people. It, it, it just, it's disgusting. It, it's just disgusting. And then to listen to so many different news outlets and individuals point of view on this and hear some of the stuff that they were saying is mind boggling because it's clear as day man you can see it this 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 world is a double standard this country is a double standard it 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 it, it is and I don't give a damn what nobody say you you don't you know you you look at it and I was talking to you guys on the on the call and I said what if a black person Walk through that crowd. Them dudes was like, them people was like animals out of a cage. Imagine what they would have done if they had had an opportunity to. Because they was out of control and we saw it, we witnessed it, we watched it all night. At least I watched it all night long, Zubin. Probably got four hours of sleep before I, because I couldn't sleep. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I had to see what the hell was going on. And then I had my kids, before they went to bed, come downstairs and saw me watching it. And this is where it tears me up. Because now I gotta explain to my eight-year-old son who asked me, why are they acting like that? And he asked me, true, Vance asked me at eight years old, why are they acting like that? Hear me when I tell you this. In his mind, that was about us. He doesn't know all the other stuff, the subplots and all the, he doesn't understand that. He thinks it's about us. I had to explain to him, it's not about us. Because he said, why? why are they acting like that? Do they not like us? That was his words, do they not like us? An eight year old kid, he can't run from it either. Because it's all over social media. And yes, he has social media. And he's going to go on YouTube. And he's, no matter how much you lock it down, he's going to see it. He can sit and watch television. And in between commercials, he's going to see it. 
and you just got to educate them. But I don't even want to be in that position. I don't want to be put in that position. But it's the world that we live in. And Jay Will, it was disgusting, as you know. It, it, was, it was disgusting. It was appalling. It was um, our capital hasn't been breached since 1812. 1812. And it was the way it went down that was so bothersome. You know, Craig Melvin put out a tweet for the Today Show and it was so accurate. He said, you know, this is an extraordinary manifestation of misinformation and disinformation that we've allowed to become ordinary. Ordinary. Uh, people believing what they're told or whatever they want to believe. And it, it brought me back here. You mentioned the, the phrase double standard. If, if there was, when I talk to my friends and my friends are all different races and ethnicities and you start making conversation about what the terminology white privilege means, that's an example right yesterday. Yesterday, it's an example. You know, to see it take two hours plus for people to actually come in and actually start being forceful with backing people away, seeing officers inside the Capitol. There's video out, you can, you can see it, taking selfies with people, selfies with people. It was so problematic to me. And the series of events that have occurred in the last 48 hours from Tuesday in the Jacob Blake situation and prosecutors finding them not guilty to then seeing people come upon the U.S. Capitol and, and not seeing tweets that say, when they start looting, we start shooting. It was so bothersome internally, man. It's, it's beyond bothersome because, Keith, there is a double standard, and we know that we don't have that same margin to do things like that, but yet here we're seeing people ushered, and it just... 